don't mean the way but but in this case maybe q do in this case maybe i will say the way of thinking maybe way of uh, yeah way of thinking do means the like way of being something right and the q do and in this case i would say same as how people have to be in their life Kanjur Shibata the 21st <laughs> and that are all Kanjur Shibatas as soon as they uh, take over this position uh, the name that they have as a young people change to Kanjur Shibata first, second and so on. In the 21st generation there's a really close connection to the uh, Japanese emperor, the family. Before they made the Yumis, they practiced Kyudo, of course, but they started to teach beginning uh, of the 20th century. And they had a dojo in Kyoto, and now they are coming to the West and teaching us. And the hand should be straight. People are waiting for me to come. That's why I, can, I like to come here. Because of, uh, I have a lot of uh, very good uh, Kyudo practitioners as my friends. That's one of the very important things for me. 56. Really? <laughs> Actually, uh, I was searching for, uh, let's say, spiritual path that I like to go. And my idea was, might be it's Kudo. After three hours I knew, well, he's the master, Sendai Sensei. Yeah, that's my teacher. The question was, who is your teacher? And we said, oh, Sensei, that's you. And he said, no, it's a Yumi. And I can tell you a little bit about the Yumi. It's built from different materials. This is wood. These are two layers of bamboo. This is wood again, and this is bamboo again, and then wood again. Most Yumis are really custom built, made to the purpose that they are used to. So a customer will come up to Sensei and say, I'd like a Yumi for me, uh, this and that size, this and that strength, and I will use it every day or I will use it every month. And then he can think about what would be the best. He can have a preference for a kind of wood or he will give you a kind of wood that would suit you. So um, a Yumi is a complicated thing and it, every Yumi reacts differently to the shooter, the Kyudoka. And that is why we say the Yumi is your master, because you get a different response from the Yumi at every shot. This is why the Yumi is so important and we treat it as a kind of holy thing within the Kyudo realm. The real formal way is to do it like this. You kneel on one knee, you take it up with your left hand, and you stand up. And working with a Yumi, it's working with a form, with a really form that has many details, details you have to put attention on to do it correctly. And it's not that it's correct or nice, it, that it's workable, that you can shoot. Tiger mouth.
So we will look at the Yumi that uh, will suit you and a Ya that will suit you. You take a Ya and you take your right hand. You put the tip on your sternum in the middle of your body. You stretch your hand and then the Ya should be about three fingers longer than where you have. If I have a short ya, then this could happen. And I could even break my yumi because my ya is too short. Hi, Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. There are two different kinds. There is the kind with feathers and there is the kind without feathers. They are meant for the long distance, for shooting on the platform to the mato, as we say, the target, which uh, is in the little house uh, far away. And the uh, unfeathered yarn we use for practice on the hay bales or the reed uh, bales which we call a makiwara uh, target, uh, a practice target, which uh, will be at about two meters distance. And the, because of the ya doesn't have to fly so far within this short distance, you don't need the feathers. And on a longer distance, it will have to fly really far, 28 meters to be precise, and then it needs the feathers. A makiwara ya, so a practice ya for um, close range target practice for the rebales has a round tip and the long distance yas that will, um, when it's good land in the sand, have a hollow tip. And that's working with the form and then you work with your own emotions. I didn't hit the target. Things like this. Uh, wow, it worked. <laughs> and it doesn't matter in our school. So it, it, uh, it makes the body uplifted from the form and from this energy you are working with, pushing, pulling, a strong humor, not so strong humor, but there's tension, a lot of tension. And then you open up immediately. <laughs> and this opening up, I think it's a really sharp practice to yeah, open your heart, to have a sense for the space you're in.
So you are the 21st generation of Yumi maker. Hi. And so you are also the 21st generation of practicing Kyudo. So what is your school? Kiryu Bishu Chikling. That's all. The Kyudo that is practiced in the Japanese Kyudo Federation uh, is as far as I know, developed after World War II. They raise the Yumi in front of you, and then they look to the Mato, to the target, <coughs> and then they start to push and pull. And in our style, we look, and the picture is like a tiger to a rabbit. The arms follow, and then we start push-pulling. So it's the main difference that it is a really old tradition. What do you think about pride and kudo? <laughs> yeah, I'm very proud when I hit the motto twice and then I do the next shot and the yeah maybe goes on the roof. And that's really a reflection of my emotions. It's a strong practice, but it shows you your fragility all the time. You can never actually lay down and rest and think, okay, done. It's always a kind of new challenge popping up somewhere and makes you think about something else and makes you work on yourself in very different ways. And um, it's very challenging. And also what I like is when you look at the different practitioners, Everybody has its very own way to express Kyudo and sometimes I just love to sit and watch because it's a fabulous way to show yourself. I like the family atmosphere, being able to share with my friends the practice and this way of uh, discovering ourselves, discovering our hearts. That's what I'm most like. I like uh, that it constantly keeps asking people to change. What do I like in Kudo? Uh, what I like is that uh, I'm getting um, in contact with my body uh, more and more, that I uh, get integrated in my body, and uh, what I like the most is to open my heart. You cannot see it, you can feel it. Every time I uh, practice um, fresh and new, this is magic for me. No, I don't think it's magic. It's very much from Earth. <laughs> and um, But to practice it, that's magic. It's an expression of life. You can, you can see life in there. You can analyze your own life. You find your own life. You live your life. Um, and it gives a lot of energy. What I like in Kudo. Um, it's a challenge. And it doesn't go by itself. But as each time when I practice, I learn something new. So it feels like I'm slowly, slowly learning. Everything. I like the form, it's very beautiful, and I like the 
the fact that um, we work with our strength and with the warrior inside and we are using a weapon but at the same time you must be very gentle with yourself and find softness so that's combination and also I like the fact that Yumi is made by a hand and it's something that is kind of alive and fragile it's so precious that he comes here every year yeah, to teach us. It's amazing how I like you do. Yeah, it's purring and it's very slow. No, from my point of view, it's it's not too boring and of course it's slow, but it's 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 a rhythm uh, which uh, which I like. I like this rhythm. The sound of the yeah. Ah, oh, I like that. I like that. Think you will come back? I think I will come back, I'm sure I will come back. One of the quality of our school that every practitioner who maybe comes uh, for the second time to a program appreciates a lot. It is familiar feeling. It, it feels like you come back to your family. And also the sensei, you can talk to him he, maybe he gives you not the answer you are expected, but he talks with you. He's a normal human being and that he's very generous. And so this family feeling has also the quality of generosity. Okay, I like to live in the countryside. Maybe not in the, in, deep in the mountain, but countryside. Right. <coughs> I like to make a uh, you know, little dojo, maybe not little dojo, and also my workshop. Then maybe and dormitory. And the, my idea that anytime, anytime, the, anytime people want, they can come to my place. Sometimes they can stay by themselves, right? Then they can practice by themselves. Yeah, it's not my. Uh, it's not my part of my business. It's my kind of dream. Yeah. And then Westerners will come. Yeah. Especially for Western, Western mm. kudos to them.